After this masterful lesson in disguise, the amophile wasp left. Where did it go? Five hours later, the wasp returned with the answer between its legs. It was hauling a paralyzed caterpillar, a forced guest for its underground room. If the wasp is able to get the caterpillar into the tunnel, of course. After the wasp has put the caterpillar in the nest, it will lay a tiny wasp egg on it, so its child will have fresh living food when it's born. The mother only had to cover up the hole again, and it did it in a very special way. Very few animals are able to do what the wasp did. It used a tool. It was thought until relatively recently that the use of tools was a distinguishing feature of mankind, and that the main difference between the intelligence of animals and men was language and the ability to use selected or handmade tools. For millions of years, however, the amophile wasp has selected stones of different sizes and shapes to achieve different results when reshaping the soil it has dug up. The wasp takes them between its jaws and, vibrating like a machine, carefully compresses the soil. A pneumatic hammer is essential to compress loose soil. When it's done skillfully, nobody can distinguish between the pre-digging and post-compression soil. The wasp thus prevents parasites or predators from discovering its treasure. Nobody would find any soft areas if they tested the hardness of the ground. Digging, camouflaging, anesthetizing, and using tools. An unbeatable combination. Birds are rightly considered to be great builders. In addition, Carpenters, masons, and other professionals employ many human inventions based on their beaks and their use of it. But the main contribution of these winged masters was that they taught our master builders the importance of having a tailored structure under each building. In Botswana, the very social weaver birds use the largest dwelling structures. They build the largest and most crowded nests in the world. Instead of selecting a branch to support their home, they use the whole tree. Branches are the main beams, and the tree trunk is the main pillar. The larger the supporting structure is, the larger and heavier the building is. The best cover is a huge conical shape, designed to shed the rain and to prevent excess weight. Most human roofs are similar. The weaver bird's nest shape may evolve with time depending on the resident's wishes. Nests may even develop artistic shapes. These birds use and enlarge the house where they were born and never leave it. In consequence, more than 300 individuals may share this super nest. The commune may weigh a ton and boast more than a century of constant usage. Each couple and their children live in their own private apartment. The apartment's entrance is through the basement. And in spite of the noise in the community, each couple enjoys a certain degree of privacy. All the neighbors are on good terms. Look, here's the child from 2B, the husband from 4A, the couple from 5A.
They keep going in and out, in and out. And everybody works in the same strange and curious activity. Social weaver birds find in their building the best protection against extreme weather. Here, the differences in temperature between day and night may exceed 50 degrees Celsius. Thanks to the thermal inertia of this gigantic estate, within the colony, the temperature is stable and the rooms are insulated against extreme temperatures. It's likely the amenities of the weaver birds' modern society have led them to use the same nest throughout the year. Contrary to the traditional temporary usage of most birds, only during breeding. The colony cooperates every day in the search for food or keeping the watch over the block. The birds will live together all their lives, except when the excess weight of the nest brings down the tree or the structure caves in. And this only happens when the dry straw gets soaked with water during the very worst storms. The thing that is a danger for weaver birds is a blessing for other birds. Earth and water equal mud. An easily molded material that is easily found in nature. Something that intelligent birds would not ignore when looking for new building materials that harden when mixed with little sticks. When the first adobe hut was built, certain birds watched over these skillful human imitators to see if they had copied their revolutionary building material well. Getting mud may be easy, although you can't always find a puddle near your building site. On the other hand, your supply source can't be very far away either. Mud is a fast drying material and you can't use it when it's dry. Besides, carrying it in your mouth isn't easy. Once you've selected the mud, you have to work quickly or the heat may cut your work short. It's an easy material to work with and it sticks to almost any surface under the right conditions. But you have to take into account that each part is heavy and that to keep a just finished nest from crumbling, you have to wait till the first bricks dry out because these bricks will support the rest. We're talking of bricks, adobe bricks, because swallows do not use just mud. They usually mix it with little bits of grass or straw. They not only make use of what nature has made available, but they have prepared the first technical formula for a building material, adobe. The correct mixture of earth, water, and dry grass makes it possible to build houses for a bird or a man. With the same technique as the swallows, man has built villages and cities where we have lived the most interesting, longest, and most sustainable part of our history. But it was neither a bird nor an intelligent mammal that first discovered mud's possibilities. Since much earlier times, insects have worked and shaped mud very skillfully. Certain termites take the wet earth into their mouths in order to shape their galleries and mounds. Termites don't use adobe in their macrostructures, but rather chemical products. 
mixed with the termite's complex saliva, 